The Ice Age specimen known as Cro-Magnon, found in the Pyrenees Mountains between France and Spain, dating back about 35,000 years, is the first type of hominin that anthropologists consider modern human. Of course, there are older finds of various types around the world of anatomically correct humans, which means they have two arms, two legs, a head, ten fingers, ten toes, etc. But they are not considered modern because they did not use advanced tools such as bifacial blade technology or exhibit cultural and genetic traits that are associated with Cro-Magnon types such as the lack of prognathism, which is how far the teeth and mouth protrude from the face, regarded as a non-agricultural and more simian archaic trait. Cro-Magnon not having any prognathism is associated with agriculturalists, as opposed to hunter-gatherers, and they had a larger cranial capacity than today's average modern human. Homo erectus, for example, had a very small brain, did not wear any clothing, had no advanced tools, no bow and arrows, no agriculture, no animal domestication, no boats, no metals, no writing, etc., etc. That said, DNA testing carried out on 30,000-year-old Cro-Magnon-type graves indicated no genetic differences from some modern European genomes that have been sequenced and compared. So Europe was populated by modern humans, or what I'm calling Cro-Magnon types, about 35,000 years ago, and the fossil and genetic remains are identical to many modern Europeans. So when did all this quote-unquote evolution take place from supposed sub-Saharan Africans that hypothetically marched out of Africa? and we are told somehow mutated into Asians, Caucasians, or Europeans. Most people know by now that Neanderthal-derived DNA was found in the genome of contemporary populations in Europe and Asia, accounting for about 1-5% to of the modern genomes of all non-Africans. Archaic admixture from a species other than modern human has also been found in indigenous Southeast Asian populations, with an estimated 4-6% to of the genome of modern Malaysians being derived from Denisovans. Neanderthal-derived and Denisovan-derived ancestry is absent from most modern populations in Sub-Saharan Africa. However, archaic alleles consistent with several independent admixture events in Sub-Saharan Africa have also been found. At least 2% of the genetic material found in Sub-Saharan African populations, for example, was inserted into their genome approximately 35,000 years ago from archaic, archaic just means old, uh, hominins that broke away from modern human lineage around 700,000 years ago. This admixture event happened with archaic hominins who once inhabited Central Africa. Additional research covering high coverage whole genome sequences of 15 sub-Saharan African hunter-gatherer males show signs that the ancestors of the hunter-gatherers interbred with one or more archaic human populations probably around 40,000 years ago suggesting that the archaic African population and modern humans diverged around 1.2 to 1.3 million years ago. In addition, protein in the saliva of certain African populations, such as the Yoruba tribe, shows evidence that a species of archaic humans contributed DNA into their gene pool, and this species was referred to as a ghost population, pointing to an extinct group of archaic humans, which appear to have contributed DNA into the gene pool of modern populations in West Africa. In other words, Sub-Saharan Africans could not possibly have populated or turned into Europeans. They did not leave Africa and magically mutate 35,000 years ago as they carry archaic DNA not found, not found in the genome of Cro-Magnons. In fact, 
the evidence suggests things happened the other way around, where Cro-Magnon, fully modern, entered into Africa, mated with archaic species, which, as I said earlier, are 1.2 to 1.3 million years diverged from modern humans, crossbred with archaic hominids, such as Homo erectus, which is now considered extinct, but who live on in the hybridized genetics of modern sub-Saharan Africans who have a greater cranial capacity today than Homo erectus had thanks to this hybridization. A news release by the Australian National University notes, citing new archaeological research, that Homo erectus, an extinct species of primitive humans, went extinct in part because they were lazy. The statement goes on to say, an archaeological excavation of ancient human populations in the Arabian Peninsula during the early Stone Age found that Homo erectus used least effort strategies for toolmaking and collecting resources. Researchers say this laziness paired with an inability to adapt to a changing climate likely played a role in the species going extinct. My name is Robert Sepper. I'm an independent anthropologist. You can find my published books on Amazon. You can support my work by making a donation to Atlantean Gardens or joining me on Patreon.com. There should be a link below. Please share this video as I rely on word of mouth and I'm usually censored. Don't forget to subscribe to get updates of when the newest video is uploaded. Keep searching for truth no matter where it leads. Please leave a comment and I hope to see you again soon.